chaos in the 40k universe is represented as a malevolent spiritual force that represents the collective psyche of every single sentient being in the Milky Way galaxy. This force coalesces in an alternate dimension known as the Immaterium. In the Immaterium, or sometimes referred to as the Warp, that pooled emotion takes form as a sentient and extremely powerful entity, four of which are the supreme ruling kings of the Warp. They are known as the Chaos Gods. These Chaos Gods are the primordial villains, clashing against reality in an eternal struggle to corrupt the Milky Way galaxy. To do this, they call upon the forces of Chaos. From demons to traitor space marines, the legions of Chaos are many and dangerous. With that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 facts about the 40k universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the brief origins of the Chaos Gods and the Chaos Forces. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We push Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions for topics that you guys would like us to create a video about, let me know what they are in the comment section below. And I want to thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can continue to make these videos. Link in the description if you guys want to support. But with that said, let's get into the brief origin of chaos. The origins of the demons lies within the Immaterium, sometimes referred to as the Warp. The Immaterium is an otherworldly dimension that doesn't follow the rules of time and space, but it's still mysteriously connected to the real world. To understand the growth of the Warp, we must look at it through the timeline of real space, although in reality, everything in the Warp has always existed, so time and space doesn't and does exist, it's a really strange place. In the beginning, the warp was very calm. It was a place of etheric power that was malleable enough to be shaped by the old ones. This is how they created the webway. They were able to use the powers of the immaterium to bend this timeless dimension to better serve them. When the old ones created the psychic warrior races, the immaterium reacted to the increased raw emotions of these creatures. More specifically, it reacted to the negative emotions created by the war in heaven, and each emotion began to coalesce to form chaos entities. These entities were ageless and they couldn't be understood by the basic intelligent beings born in reality. Enslavers, warp vampires, furies, all of these creatures assaulted reality. Some entities, however, became the raw essence of a particular emotion, and then they became the Chaos Gods. I hesitate to say that the Chaos Gods were created or that they were born, because strangely enough, the Chaos Gods have always existed in the Immaterium. This is another strange effect of the reality-bending powers of the warp. There are four major Chaos Gods, Slanesh, Korn, Nurgle, and Zinch. Each god was so powerful that it could break off a piece of itself and send it into real space. These were known as demons. Demons are basically smaller pieces of the grander essence of the emotion of the Chaos God. And the Chaos Gods themselves can't really be understood by a simple human mind. The true goal of the Chaos Gods is almost as mysterious as the Immaterium is. They fight amongst each other as much as they fight in real space. Each faction is one of the four major Chaos Gods, with a fifth faction that encompasses those that they corrupt. We can start off with Nurgle. He is the raw emotion of entropy, and as such, he is empowered by anything that causes decay. Disease is the most common thing that's connected to Nurgle, as it is the quickest way for something to rot, but Nurgle is fed by simple passing of time, aging, deterioration, anything like that feeds Nurgle. Nurgle's goal can be summed up as convincing or corrupting his followers to accept the process of falling apart. Once a creature in real space understands that deterioration is inevitable and chooses to spread that ideology, Nurgle blesses him with his powers. His followers are always depicted as disease-ridden creatures that joyfully spread the pestilence, because in their minds, the Lord will always keep them in a perpetual state of decay. In a strange way, they always enjoy immortality as they very slowly fall apart or die. The reason you would want to play Nurgle is because these demons and worshippers are very durable. They have high wounds and usually have really good saves. It is very hard to kill a Nurgle army. And then there's the Chaos God Corn. He is the raw emotion of rage. He feeds off of whatever anger causes, usually conflict, war, or violence, and the spilling of blood. He also feeds off of martial prowess. 
Korn's minions and followers are usually savage warriors and never make use of psychic powers. He wants to sow as much anger as he can, and using psychic or even range powers usually prevents his enemies from feeling vengeance in their heart, which is something that he wants. He feeds off of that. Korn and his demons follow the traditional appearance of most malevolent demons. They are horned devils, massive brass-covered warriors, and giant winged monsters. You would want to play Korn if you prefer melee combat as opposed to range or psychic powers, but also want that idea of being part of the immaterium and like the chaos of the warp. The third chaos god is Zeech. Zinch is the raw emotion of change. He feeds off of the fluctuations of emotions that stem from plotting, hoping, and understanding. When a scholar grows in understanding on a certain subject matter, or a politician maneuvers through a risky dealing, Zinch is empowered. The most mysterious of the chaos gods, the followers, and the demons of Zinch always gain new insight into the universe and the psychic powers of the immaterium. Aesthetically, he represents wisdom, so things like uh, birds, uh, books, scrolls, feathered pens, things like that really represent Zinch. You would want to play Zinch if you are interested in all of the disciplines of psychic powers. He is basically the perfect uh, chaos god just to have a full army of psychers. Finally, you have Slanesh. Slanesh is the raw emotion of pleasure. He feeds off of the desire and then the fulfillment of that desire. His demons and followers bathe in the ecstasy of release no matter how it is achieved. The aesthetic of sexual desire is the most common amongst the followers of Slanesh, but anything that brings enjoyment can be a way to honor Slanesh. Out of the four chaos gods, Slanesh is the last faction to get an update with new models and new lore. You also have the corrupted followers of the Chaos Gods. These are usually humans that have turned their backs on the Imperium and are now dedicated to either one or all of the Chaos Gods. You rarely have an alien species that is corrupted by Chaos, not because it doesn't happen, but because Games Workshop, again, focuses on humanity. You can have Traitor Guardsmen, you can have Traitor Adeptus Mechanicus, known as the Dark Mechanicus, but the main focus and the most popular one are the Chaos Space Marines. The origin stories of the Chaos Space Marines dates back to the Great Crusade. We are picking up where we left off with the origin story of humanity. During this time, the Chaos Gods managed to corrupt the Emperor's favorite Primarch son, Horus Lupercal. Horus was actually the War Master of all of humanity's military forces, a role given to him by his father, who was busy working on the Webway Project. This was a project to create humanity's very own path through the Immaterium, just like the Old Ones and the Eldar did. Horus was convinced by the Chaos Gods to betray his father, which initiated a civil war to overthrow the Emperor and gain control of humanity. Horus rallied nine of his brothers to fight against the Imperium in what became known as the Horus Heresy. Ultimately, the War Master was defeated by his father and his Primarch brethren who remained loyal. Unfortunately, the Emperor suffered terrible wounds when he fought Horus, and ultimately he had to be entombed into the Golden Throne, which became his life support system. The traitorous space marines that didn't die during the Battle of Terra actually escaped into the Eye of Terror, and since that time they've been coming out of the Eye of Terror or out of the Immaterium and uh, still fighting the Imperium and just causing mayhem in the service of the Chaos Gods. In appearance, the Chaos Space Marines are just mutated Astartes, and those mutations change depending on what god they worship. They usually worship either one of the four Chaos Gods or all four. We have a whole playlist on different war bands, so if you guys want to get an idea of the in-depth lore of any uh, type of Chaos Space Marine, uh, check out the playlist on the channel. And those were 40 facts on the brief origin of Chaos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's just a quick brief origin. If you guys want more details on specific uh, chaos, whatever it may be, just let me know what it is in the comment section below or check out our playlist. Uh, we have a chaos playlist. It goes over like greater demons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, also just search 40 facts and then whatever topic you want to look up and odds are we already have a video for you. Um, we've we've covered chaos a lot from from cults to demons to um, the traitor marines. Uh, chaos is, is a lot of fun and it really brings out that grim darkness that 40k is, is known for. So if you have a, a friend who's a beginner in, in 40k is interested in chaos, show them this video so they can get a brief understanding and then they can go out and explore uh, more of the, uh, the, the badassery of chaos or the grim darkness of chaos, I should say. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening and I will talk to you tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.
Oh, I live to put my freedom back.